Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video about level design where today we are not going to talk about level design but we're going to talk about texturing very large surfaces, for example these cathedral walls. So usually right what you do is you grab your, you grab your mesh, you UV it, you export it, you texture it in Simpsons Painter done, right? But since it's so big uh, and co covers so much units, uh, if you want to get like decent detail in this texture, you have a, like 32K texture at least, which is of course super heavy. Uh, so we're not gonna do that, right? So I'm gonna use one single 4K texture to texture all of these walls at the same time. And it's a simple trick, but once you know it, it will save you a lot of uh, time and it will also save up a, a lot of RAM and CPU uh, cycles that you actually wanna use for something interesting in the game. So the first thing I did is I chopped up the walls into several pieces uh, for two reasons. A, texturing purposes, but B, maybe more important, is for optimization purposes. So for example, if you're standing over here, you can't see these walls over here, right? So you, you don't want to render them out. But if it's one single mesh, if you're standing over here, the game engine will still render out all these parts of here that you can't see because it's a single mesh. So by chopping it up, you, can, you give the engine the option to actually hide them or call them, which means you will save up a lot of um, triangles, which you don't have to render, therefore it's more efficient. So what I want to do is I want to make my own texture. I want to make my own brick shapes. I want to make my own texture and then we're going to use them as a texture. So first thing I did, I created a plane here. It's a, it's a wall tile, in a wall tile. It's one single plane with uh, no segments, just single planes or two triangles, that's it. So next up is I'm gonna create a high poly version of this. So HP, and I'm gonna isolate my selection over here. And first thing I wanna do is I wanna make my own shape of the actual stones. I'm gonna hit connect here. I'm gonna grab the thing over here. I'm gonna go for six in this case. Six, because I, I kinda want them to be big. And uh, the actual blocks, the bricks, I want them to be big, so. Next step would be to create the vertical ones. So I'm gonna go here again, but this time I wanna use an uneven number like this i will show you why so i want to have my bricks to be two right so two of my actual squats so in here as well and then you can see right you actually get a nice like this right so a, a nice pattern that i kind of want to have so next step would be just grab these ones over here and these ones over here and, and, I, and i'm going to skip a row here so i can actually create a pattern like a zigzag pattern if you want to call it like that I'm gonna hit extrude. Let's do uh, it's 0.3. No, let's do 0.4 actually. And let's do an offset of like five. That's it. So next step will be again these two, these two, these two. Same thing. Again 0.4. Keep this keep the same offset of course. Otherwise it gets really weird. And then again also an offset here. And in here, I'm gonna skip one of them. So I'm gonna grab one and then I'm gonna go two and again, one. Same here, two, one. By doing this, we'll actually create a nice looking interesting pattern. Again, 0.4, five offset. Same thing here. Like this. Oh, point, point 0.4 and five. See, now we've got a nice pattern. It will actually tile. You can, of course, check it as well if you want to. So I'm going to hit this one over here and I'm just going to tile it real fast to see if it actually tiles. The first thing you notice, though, is that it doesn't tile over here, uh, which is kind of annoying. So we need to fix this. It's pretty easy to fix those. I'm going to go to my front view here real fast. I'm going to grab the edge, this one over here, and also then, oh, this one, sorry. And this one, so the, the piece with one uh, quad. And I'm just going to snap it to the actual grid over here so it's nice aligned with the actual border same on the opposite side here this one and this one and this one of course always check it and then you can see here there we go again let's check it out so i'm going to again tile it and now we've got a nice looking tiling mesh right this is the mesh that we're going to use to actually create the actual shape awesome so I don't need these faces over here since it's going to be tiled anyway. I don't need them. This will only cause trouble if you don't delete them. And trouble as in smoothing the actual object. So there we go. Perfect. Let's delete history. So next step would be to make it um, ready for ZBrush. But now if I hit smooth, you'll see, you, you <laughs> yeah, this is not what you want to have, right? So you want to actually uh, maintain the shape 
of the wall so i'm gonna add a whole lot of uh, segments over here but the first thing i kind of want to do is i kind of want to bevel them to make it a little bit more interesting so i'm going to grab all my lines over here that one 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 and then we're going to hit bevel and now we're looking for a nice number here i probably like i don't know 0.3 maybe like this and i'm going to do the same thing for everybody else everything else i'm just going to pause it real fast so you don't have to Watch me do the same action over and over again. Okay, so I finished the uh, beveling. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that you always check to see if every single uh, edge has been beveled properly. So you just hit three in this case and you just want to check out, okay, does it actually, do I have like these nice organic lines? And if it, if it gets interrupted, then you probably did something wrong. So make sure that you double check it to see if everything's still there. Also check out the actual, uh, the tiling. Does it still tile properly? In this case it does. Okay, then we can move on to the next step, which is be, will be the actual um, preparation for ZBrush. So I actually throw it in ZBrush over here, and now when I hit Smooth right, you can still see the actual shapes. They're wrong, so we actually need to add supporting edge loops that will actually um, prevent that kind of smoothing. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to hit two segments over here, I'm going to pinch them in the opposite direction. So the closer they are to the actual edge, the sharper it's going to be in this case so if i hit just hit three now you can see it's nice and sharp the reason why i'm using two is here so i also cover this one over here by default so it's a little bit more efficient then you go in and then you do for every single thing over here all the lines here both horizontal and vertical it's a little bit time consuming but it will save you a lot of time see this looks good then so same here for the opposite direction for horizontal just keep Click on connect, connect, connect. Done, right? So now if I'm just gonna hit export here real fast, I'll show you. I'm gonna export it. And then I'm gonna load it back into ZBrush. And now you can see it's actually tells properly. Cool, right? So what I kinda wanna do is I wanna add uh, more support. Uh, S loops here so i'm gonna go here in the middle i'm gonna hit one segment so i can uh, support a little bit more detail in the center of the bricks because i kind of want to do that there we go so you kind of want to have the faces the same size roughly the same size so if you want to go even further you could also add one over here as well um, that will give it a little bit more uh, support in this case i'll actually do that as well This way we can just add a little bit more detail um, and the smoothing will be a little bit more ev evenly dis distributed across the actual mesh. So next up will be the actual sculpting of it. So I'm going to export this bad boy. I'm going to throw it into ZBrush again. So import it. There we go. Then we're going to hit subdivide a lot. In this case, I'm going to go for, let's go for 4 million. I'm going to grab my drawing tablet. That was the sound that you just heard. That was my chair. Next thing I kind of want to do is I kind of want to break it up, right? So the first thing I kind of want to do here is I want to grab my uh, clay, clay tubes. I'm going to go for a Z sub and like a low intensity. I'm going to zoom in further, 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 further. Then the only thing I kind of want to do is I want to create these lines over here, right? So I'm going to create these lines that it looks like it has been around for a while, if you know what I mean. So you get this really nice... Be careful though with the angles over here because again this part is going to tile properly so you want to make sure that they that the ends here actually don't have that much detail otherwise it can cause issues with the actual tiling and then i'm going to hit smooth real fast so you get this nice looking rough edge that's my goal over here so i'm gonna keep on doing this for for a while as you can imagine and once i'm done we're gonna actually texture this bad boys okay so i've uh beveled everything extra and now i'm just adding a little bit more like small details here here and there uh, one thing to be careful of though is that you add like really big detail if you know what i mean so you don't want to add like a giant line over here for example or if you grab the uh, chisel brush you don't want to have like these really line big lines because because again this is gonna tile right so what you'll you'll end up with is a massive 
tiling of some details that will look really annoying because you can easily uh, pick them out. So you kind of want to be careful with like really big details, but if you like add like small lines over here and there, that only helps giving the walls a little bit of character. It also shows the actual age, for example, as well. So I'm gonna add like a little bit more lines here and there, just to get a little bit more detail in there. So it will look a little bit more interesting from a distance, like this. I'm gonna add one more subdivision here, for example, and I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail. A little bit smaller, a little bit harder uh, chiseling, if you know what I mean. A little bit more here and there, not too much though again, because we don't wanna get this really uh, tiling effect because they will just look stupid and cheap and mostly cheap because they're like hey that that artist didn't pay any attention to the actual details or the texturing so you kind of want to avoid that so but this will work out okay i think a little bit more here and there that's it let's do one more here on the lower side i'm just again the the only thing i've used is the uh, clay tubes nothing else and once in a while I just move it a little bit and then you get this nice looking brick. Maybe it's one part over here where we get a little bit more detail in the middle, like really subtle. Let's move it again. So I get a little more of like a dent in the actual rock. Always looks good here as well. There's like the finer detail, that's it. Okay. For now I'm just gonna say this is done. So I'm gonna save this real fast. I'm gonna call this inner wall tile. And then what I want to do is I want to export my high poly mesh. So in this case, I'm going to go to tool, uh, tool export in a tile. I'm going to call this HP, so high poly. No, high poly. Then we're going to wait a little bit. So it's finally done exporting. Uh, it took a while. So I'm, I'm back in Maya, as you can probably see. And what I kind of want to do now is I want to show you the next step, which you need to take. So I'm going to grab my low poly mesh, this one over here. And then we need to double check the actual UV. So I'm gonna go into my UV editor, grab it here. And the one thing that you need to be 100% sure is that the UV covers the entire UV space from zero to one. In this case, I've, I've done it already, so this is good. So make sure it covers the entire UV space so you have maximum coverage of your actual texture. Then we're gonna export this bad boy as an FBX. Uh, so we can load it into Substance Painter. I'm gonna call this. In a wall tile, basically. Then in Painter here, I'm gonna grab my new uh, new one over here. I'm gonna grab my actual tile. Uh, YouTube over there. Low poly one, the FBX. This one, probably this one. Uh, yeah. Open it. That's it. Let's lower it up. It's just a plane, right? Double check the actual UV space. It's perfect. Okay. Next step will be the actual baking of our high poly mesh onto this. So I'm gonna go here and gonna go to my bake mesh maps. I'll select my high poly mesh here. It's two gigs, holy shit. <laughs> Let's see if this actually works. Probably not, probably need to downscale a little bit. And for now, I'm just gonna leave the settings as it is. First, I wanna test it, right? I wanna show you what happens. I'm gonna hit bake. So it finally baked. Um, I had to export a, a lower version than this. I had to export one subdivision lower, so the 4.5 million triangles, otherwise it didn't work. But you can see, right, this is not what we sculpted, not at all. Uh, because it has a simple reason for this, uh, so if I go back to my settings over here, you have a setting here called the max frontal distance, right? We need to up this, so right now it's 0 0.01, which means it will only export like, oh, like a small percentage of the actual extrusion of it, so like over here, so we need to go a little bit higher than this, so I'm going to up it like 6.5 for example, and then we're going to bake it again, and then we should actually see a little bit more detail than we have. Uh, so it's a little bit finding the, the correct settings that you actually want to need, that, that you're going to need. In this case, let's see how this one works out. Right now, I'm just baking it at 2K because I just want to get the settings right first before I make the final 4K bake. See, that's much better, much better. This actually won't be sculpted much better. Um, so now I can do finally can do my 4K bakes. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna go to set 4K. I'm gonna turn on the anti-aliasing as well to like four times four. I'm gonna hit bake. I'm gonna pause the video because this is. I'm gonna guess it's gonna take a while. So. So I baked the normal map, so now I'm gonna do the rest of the maps. So I only did normal map here because it's a little bit faster. In this case, I'm gonna turn off all and then except for the normal map, I can also turn off this one now. Uh, I can just get rid of the actual high poly because it will now take the normal map as base. So if I now bake the other maps here, it's gonna be okay. So there you go, it's, it has the same 
it will actually use the normal map that we baked already as base for the actual map so it's a little bit faster almost done and there we go so everything's baked now so now we can actually texture this bad boy I already have a texture of a material done here I've got a stone which I really like I'm gonna throw it in here and there we go we've got a nice looking texture map of our actual walls here for example I like this one of course you can also do a different one here and you can also grab for example let's do dirty stone for a second just finding one scale what do I actually like which one do I actually like it's finding it's a little bit of a playing with the actual textures here I don't like that one let's grab statue that's even worse And I just got these uh, textures from uh, Substance Share, or these materials, I'd say. Ooh, no, 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 no. Okay, let's just use H Stone here. Let's make some tweaks. I'm gonna change my face here a little bit more. Uh, let's saturate it here. So I'm gonna add a filter. Gonna load down the, the saturation a little bit, maybe a little, a little bit darker. Something like this, that looks better. And now we want to make it interesting, right? So the first thing that you really want to avoid is add again like big details in the texture as well. So you want to be careful with this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little bit with the roughness right now. The roughness is a little bit boring. It's a little bit flat. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a fill layer. Oh, fill layer. And the only thing I want to add here is the actual roughness. So no color, no height. Just that one. Hey, what went wrong there? Much better roughness i'm gonna grab my like black and white spots one of them and you can already see because it's a little bit more interesting right the texture so i'm gonna go to my roughness i'm gonna set this one to overlay makes it a little bit more and then you can see now we've got some nice detail in here this makes it a little bit more interesting to look at so i mean color is not that interesting um, it's actually the roughness that makes the object appear interesting when you actually view it in game I kind of like this though maybe we can add a little bit of dirt here so i'm gonna add a generator but you want to be careful again because this will tile like crazy so i have to be a little bit more careful multiply this and then lower this down a lot so it's there but it's almost not visible that looks pretty good that's pretty good okay so i'm gonna set this to 4k now so we can actually export this bad boy Shouldn't take too long. There we go already. One final check just to rotate the light around, see if you've got some nice interesting highlights here. So playing a little bit with the highlights. That's good. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna save this real fast. I'm gonna go to my YouTube video and I'm gonna call this inner wall. Then we're gonna export this. I'm gonna go, uh, since I'm using HDRP, I'm gonna export as Unity HDRP. I'm gonna go to YouTube, hit and done. Let's wait for it. So the next step would be a Maya. Then we're gonna do a simple trick that you can use. Uh, it's actually a really fun trick once you know about it. Um, but figuring out took me a while. Let's wait for this real fast. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna close this one. I don't need it anymore. Same for ZBrush. I don't need it either. Let's go. Let's go back to Maya. So I'm gonna grab my walls here again. Um, let's go here. It would actually work or not. Oh, sorry, I didn't actually open my file. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna grab my walls. So now these ones here, those are we can actually hide them for a second. Let's grab my wall here. A wall is fine as well. Just grab this one. There you go. Okay, so they all share the same uh, texture the, or material in this case. So it's the inner wall, and I'm gonna hit reconnection here for a second, and then I'm gonna add a texture. So I'm gonna go here, file. And then I'm gonna grab my actual texture here, my uh, just gonna grab my base color, right? That's it. Okay. So next step will be to open up the UV editor again. Let's go here. There we go. So I've done this trick already. Um, I'm gonna go here real fast. So 
kind of like this. So I've fixed the UVs already. Don't mind the actual redness because it's inverted, but it's fine. So I made these things straight, right? All the lines straight because I don't want to get like weird distortions in the actual texture. So I'm going to hit uh, this one over here. I'm going to hit six. So <laughs> you can see, right? The uh, bricks are absolutely fucking ridiculously massive. So we need to do a simple trick here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my texture again. Oh, did I just hit probably as well? I just import it if you want to. So in my UV editor again, right? Next thing I want to do is I I want to get the texture density of this tile. Since it's huge, it has its own texture density. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here so you can see it. So I'm going to go to my transform here and all the way down, you can get a texture density. I'm going to hit get, right? So it, it gets the actual value here. And I'm using map size of 2.0 or 2048. So when I got this one here, I'm going to go back to my wall that I just selected this one. Go to my, again, I'm just hide it real fast. I'm going to turn on my texture size, texture actually. UV editor again, and now I'm going to hit set. Now it's going to look okay. Now, now we actually get these nice textures. We can always see some tiling happening here. This is kind of annoying, so we kind of want to fix that at some point. In, in Substance Painter here, you can see really bad tiling here. This is going to be annoying, right? This is something you will actually notice. So I'm going to fix this later on, but for now, let's go back here to the UV editor here. So this, usually, right, this is bad, right? Since it's, it's way bigger than the zero to uh, one space. Um, usually this is bad, but here's the big button. It's actually really fun. So by default, the game engine uses UV zero for texture coordinates, right? In this case, this is my UV zero. So I don't really care if it's bigger than zero to one. What I do care about is the UV1 because the UV1 is used for light baking. In this case, what I've done already here is I created a new a, a new set here. So you can go to UV sets, copy to UV sets. In this case, light map. Um, let me just do this real fast for you guys. So I'm going to hit delete current set. So you can go to copy UVs to UV set, copy to new UV set, rename current UV set. Oh, I just hit an accident. Rename, I, I call this light map. A little bit easier for me to actually figure out what I'm doing here. And in the UV1 or UV light map, I'm going to hit Ctrl L so it actually fits in the 0 to 1 space. So UV0, it can be bigger, it can be as big as you want, it doesn't really matter as long as UV1, which is used for light baking, is actually set between 0 and 1. In this case, this will going to work just fine. So this is a simple trick. So UV0 for texture space, that can be as big as you want. UV1 for light mapping, it has to have a certain size. So I did everything here as well. So if I now go back into Maya here, I'm gonna grab my all my walls here. And all the walls now, they share the same material and they all now have the same texture. So I've done the um, texture density before I started. That saves me a little bit of time. But you can see though that I really need to fix the tiling over here. But that's something I could do in Substance Painter again. It's probably noise. And the dirt that I added, but that's a little bit different. So now you can just export this um, into any game engine and light baking and the texture density is gonna be just fine. So you don't have to worry about anything at all. So this is a simple trick. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time.